okay, we would be giving these net ion reactions. Now they're called net ion because the spectators are gone. This could be something like aluminum nitrate, okay, or let's do, let's do aluminum chloride. This could be aluminum, uh, that's not a good example. Yeah, we'll do aluminum chloride. Uh, this could be, uh, you know, I'm sorry, not a good example. This could be copper chloride, pure aluminum, and this could be aluminum chloride. And by the way, from, for my students, we did this lab. We dropped aluminum and copper chloride, and we produced copper, and we said we made aluminum chloride. But as I keep telling you people, we write it this way, but it's really a shame. If it's soluble, it's really what? It's really copper plus two ions and chloride ions. So this would be soluble as well, although aluminum chloride is less soluble. And what we do is we would get rid of the spectator ions. So if you just get rid of the spectating, and in, these, in this reaction, the ion just hanging around would be the chloride ion. So if you get rid of your spectator ions, you'd be left with this overall net ion reaction. We've talked about net ion reactions. You know that overall net ion reaction in a strong acid, strong base, um, uh, uh, acid base reaction is H plus plus OH minus gives me water. We're taking out what? All the spectators. This could be HCl. This could be NaOH. That breaks apart to H plus Cl negative and so forth. The Cl negative and the Na plus do not ionize water, don't do anything. They're just spectating, so we take them out. Okay, so let's get to this. All right, so Regents Lane, you have this. Now, uh, some people suggest you write half reactions, and I say that's a good place to start. Copper plus two becomes copper zero, okay, plus two electrons over here. Aluminum zero, okay, becomes aluminum plus three, plus three electrons. And just like it did in the more advanced ones, okay, you've got to do what with the electrons? You've got to balance them. So a common factor here would be six electrons on both sides. So I times this by three. That gives me six. Distribute that. I'm going to times this side by two because this gives me two times three, six electrons. And now my electrons, okay, are going to balance and then I add everything together. Two aluminums plus three copper plus twos gives me three coppers plus two aluminum plus threes. And I'm going to put this two right in there. I'm going to put this three right in there. I'm going to put this three coppers right in there. And you guessed I'm going to put this two aluminum plus threes right in there. And you remembered, we balanced this reaction in that stoichiometry lab as 2, 3, 2, 3. Okay, but we're just looking at the redox part of this reaction. You balance the electrons, you balance the redox reaction always. Okay, now, isn't, is there another way to do this? Okay, that we don't have to have right half reactions. Well, I suggest you write the half reactions, but you could look at this another way. Okay, let me show you. Let's get rid of all of this. Okay, and there's a way to do this, but I suggest half reactions is your way of thinking, but some people think of it this way, and I'm just here to help people. So aluminum zero, this is copper is zero, this is plus two minus three. Okay, well, I got one aluminum, one aluminum, one copper, one copper. Some people would say on a test, hey, this is balanced, but if you notice something, the total charge on this side is plus two. The total charge on this side is plus three. That's not going to work. Charge must be conserved as long as with mass and, of course, energy. So how do I make this side be plus, uh, have this, what would be the common charge between them? Well, if you remember, it was six electrons, so we want plus six on both sides. So I would take A2 here, and I would take A3 uh, here. So we have, again, I'm sorry, we have a 2 here for the aluminum to make this a plus 6, okay? And then, well, if you have two aluminums on this side, you need two aluminums here. This side is still plus 2. Notice that doesn't change the charge because aluminum is 0, but we still have a plus 2, and we need a plus 6, so we'd have to put a 3 here to give me a plus 6, but 3 coppers on one side gives me 3 coppers on another. So that's another way to do this. 
without the half reactions. I know it's blasphemy for me to show you something without half reactions, but that's a skill that some people like to look at. Let's look at the, the next one. Okay. Oh, plus two on what? Plus two on this side. Plus two on this side. One magnesium, one magnesium, two H's, two H's, my friends in chemistry, we are balanced. Okay, if you do your half reactions, you'll see that. So again, it's a way to save some time. Let's do this one. Okay, zinc and zinc plus two. So we have a, what we're doing here, we're plus six overall. We're plus five overall. Okay. So a little, little more problems here. So what can we do here? Now, if you run into a scenario you just can't figure it out in an easier way, then half reactions are your friends. Okay, but um, so in this case, I may say, well, plus five and plus six, I just can't see it. Then, then do your half reactions. You know, you do your zinc zero. Okay, go your zinc plus two, two electrons, and you go to your chromium plus three. Oh, bad Grodsky. Do your chromium plus six. Always keep them on the same side. Okay, and you go into chromium plus three. Of course, to do that, you need to have what? Three electrons being absorbed because we're still having the same electrons or the same charge in both sides of a half reaction, whether we're doing the more advanced method or the shortcut method here. Okay, and three and two need a common factor. Six, six electrons. So we would go... Three, three, three times two is six. Okay, this would be two. Two times three is six, and two here. And electrons cancel, and we'd have three zinc, two of these, zinc with three. Chromium plus three is, if you see up here, two. Okay, and if you check, very simply, two. 2 chromiums, 2 chromiums, this is plus 12 altogether, and we need to have plus 12 on this side, so 2 times 3 is plus 6, 3 times 2 is plus 6, and we have the same mass and same charge in both sides, both sides is plus 6. Okay, we finish this out. Alright, um, you try 7 and 8, and I'm just going to give you my uh, answers in a second, so I'm going to pause this now, and you do 7 and 8, and I'll show you the answers. Okay, so here are my answers. Number 7 was already balanced, right? Plus 3 on this side. Plus 3 on this side. 1 silver, 1 silver, 1 iron, 1 iron. Now, if you did the half reactions, because you weren't sure, by doing that quick, easy method here that I was showing you, uh, you see that you absorb one electron, you release one electron, electrons cancel, and nothing in front implies 1 for everything. So that was canc that was already balanced. Okay, the next one, now I did half reactions just to show, but some people could have figured it out just to put the two on both of these sides, right? If you need put a two here, it's plus six, plus two is plus eight. How to make this side plus eight? Put a two here. Okay, but if you do the half reactions, this gives off two electrons. Sn plus two is going up in charge because it loses two electrons, and Fe plus two is getting reduced. It's going down in charge by actually losing are absorbing one electron, I times by two and distribute that here to make sure the electrons are balanced. The common factor is two. And I plug them in. Either way, it's a pretty fast method, and these are the regents level, New York State regents level way to balance half reactions, net ion reactions. Okay? And of course, uh, I reviewed how we do it in the real <laughs> world, how you really balance uh, uh, redox reactions in an acidic environment. There's also a basic environment but I did not cover that in this lecture.